Hey, good morning, or good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Freddie Steele from Chicago, and uh, it's just about a little bit past midnight here, and um, I welcome you. I'm going to wait just a couple of seconds, but I wanted to do, uh, talk to you. Hey, Pantane. Hey, Ranger. Um, I'm a, a pastor of a church in uh, southwest Chicago suburbs of Palos Heights. We do things a little bit differently, and I don't... Uh, do this uh, scope to bash or anything like that, but um, there are things that I don't like about church that uh, I'm fixing and trying to fix in my church, and uh, which is uh, Mercy Gate International. It's in the southwest Chicago suburb of Palos Heights, but one of the things that um, that has to be uh, corrected in the church is this thing about equality, and uh, I guess before I get on to that, uh, it, it would be natural to say then that, uh, or somebody would ask, is the church prejudice or are Christians prejudice? And I hate to say that we are, but we are. Uh, there's some spiritual pride that, uh, that creeps in, and uh, we find ourselves, I think, looking down on other people where it's an us and them uh, kind of a mentality. And God just doesn't look at people that way. Um, and, and we shouldn't either. The, the church is, is too affected by culture as, as opposed to really being affected by the nature of Christ. And now, of course, uh, I can't speak because you know. I agree with that. I agree. It's, this is just a general trend. And I'm not like that. Uh, I believe, uh, and, and I'll explain that to you in just a second, but I see it too often, um, far more often than not. And, um, so hopefully somebody's going to watch this that maybe has been tangled up in uh, spiritual pride and prejudice that, um, and maybe it, this will just stir their mind to think about it and consider it and realize that, uh, listen, when we were yet unlovable, the Bible says when we were yet unlovable, that Christ died for us. Well, if he, if he did that for us, then uh, we ought to do the same for other people. Uh, uh, have the same love, affection for people as as Christ does. If he if he lives in our heart and uh, lives, so. Uh, but if there is that um, looking down on people and uh, the the idea of inequality, for instance, I was in uh, India uh, in February for twelve days and saw abject poverty uh, and saw some affluence too. And uh, as we went around and visited orphanages and, and ministered in churches, um, I saw the, 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 the disparity between the two. And um, some of the folks there said that, uh, and, and th these are Christian people, said that the caste system is so uh, entrenched in people that uh, they said that it breaks down into two, two, two categories. You have the haves and the have-nots. And he said that... Um, just the culture has they've been so steeped in it that the haves won't help the have nots and guys I mean tell you it was a level of poverty that um, you know I, I, more than once I saw a mother with several little children uh, curled up on the sidewalk filthy dirty and uh, uh, and people bypassing them and won't lend a hand because uh, they feel that there is a caste system, or there is a caste system, and then also they don't want to mess with the, that person's karma. So, um, so you look down on other people. But here in America, I had a pastor several months ago uh, to tell me. He, he asked me, he said, "Now, Pastor Freddie, how do? Why is your church? How did you become so multicultural and multiracial?" And I said, oh, well, it's simple. You just uh, love people. And he chuckled and said, oh, I, I know that, but really, wh what does it take? And I said, you have to love people. He chuckled again, said it the third time. And um, I said, uh, or he asked me again, and I, I said, hey, man, it's you have to love people. And uh, the devil does enter the church, not only because they say the Lord will enter the devil. I didn't quite catch that exactly what you what you meant, but um, either bring it back to me. But but anyway, he said, uh, yeah, he said, Pastor Freddie, my church wants to be multicultural, multiracial, uh, multiethnic, but not under this roof. And uh, he didn't like that. But uh, so what we're talking about tonight is 
uh, is the how that that there is an equity and equality that for all mankind that comes from the heart and the mind of God. It, and it begins by understanding that uh, Christ died for all of mankind. I think that when you uh, are become a Christian, there's a danger, and I see it happening a lot, where people, Christians, look down on other people. And uh, now, uh, this, this is a, a real extreme, but uh, I read an article today where a pastor in, I think it might have been Texas, said some vile things about the uh, tragedy that took place in Orlando uh, week before last. And he said, um, he actually preached this in his pulpit, and he said that um, that those people were scum of the earth and that he prayed that all the people in the hospital uh, that uh, hadn't been killed would die. And, uh, you know, somebody needs to get to that man and say, dude, you're preaching something, but you're not preaching Christ. And uh, that's definitely not Christianity. Um, but now that's an extreme level. But, I'm, you know, I, I've uh, traveled around the world, traveled a lot of places, and I can tell you the times that I go into churches that are completely white, all white. They might all be, uh, a church might be all upper uh, upper middle class. And, um, and I think that that church culture... Um, creates a mindset that we're something like a country club and uh, in a country club you go to to church on Sunday you pay your dues now I'm a, I'm a, a charismatic pastor in the southwest Chicago suburb of Palos Heights um, actually a, a bishop but um, uh, I'm Protestant and um, oh, I lost some train of thought there I said with all my respects or religions promote empathy uh, well, they should. I mean, I can only speak about Christianity, and, and, and I'm glad you said that. And uh, I just don't see it as, as much as, uh, uh, as, as I think that I should, especially empathy. Um, you know, your, our hearts have to break. Uh, what I see sometimes is that when there's a tragedy on, uh, for instance, the tragedy two weeks ago when uh, the shooting at the a gay bar in, in Orlando, I kept waiting for my Twitter and uh, Facebook feed to just start getting flooded with Christians saying things you know, like I'm praying, like what happens when uh, Paris was bombed and so forth, and they put up the red and blue uh, stripes of the, of the uh, uh, flag of, of uh, France to show empathy. So other, so other religions other than Christianity wear the white thing. Yeah, they sure do. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm Christian. I'm just not Catholic, and it's just a, it's a de designation for the office that, that I'm in. Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Chicago, well, and that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And, um, you know, uh, I, I wish that I had seen the, the uh, social media of Christians just burn, burning up with, you know, empathy and care and sympathy, maybe offers of help and, and so forth. I, I would have loved to have seen a national ministry to say, hey, you know what, we're going to make a drive among our donors and help with the uh, funeral expenses and, you know, set up some kind of a trust at a local uh, bank down there and uh, and ask the Christian community to donate to that to help with... Uh, maybe even medical bills, and I don't think it's too late to do that. But anyway, um, yeah, I think that uh, uh, that the, the church that, that and Christians at times, and far too often then, uh, no, I'm not Catholic, I'm, I'm Protestant. Uh, yeah, a little bit I, I do. Um, I subscribe to the news feeds and that kind of a thing, but yeah, I'm Protestant, not uh, Catholic, I'm a bishop. And pastor of church in Southwest Chicago suburb of Palos Heights, and my um, Twitter and feed here on Instagram is church right now, which means that the idea is that let's correct some things that are wrong in the church. It's not to bash people or anything. It's not to be critical, but I know how that we have slipped away from, uh, for instance, things such as the golden rule. Uh, and I thought about it as walking out of a, 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 a grocery store tonight, and I, I thought, you know what, we could. We could have a, a national healing take place if 
whether you're a Christian or not, doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Christian, the important thing is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, he, that's right. That's the bottom line. I don't disagree with you at all, Miss. Th I didn't see your handle, but it, it's Misty. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, the point, but the point for me coming on here tonight is that uh, if there was anybody that preached equality, it was Christ. And uh, there might look to be a, a, a little bit of a contradiction with that because uh, there was a woman came by that, that begged him uh, for, for, for uh, assistance. And he said, it's not meat to give uh, bread uh, to the dogs. I think she was Samaritan. Uh, and yet, but he still ministered to her. So if there was anybody that, that who, who exemplified equality, um, for instance, there was, uh, back in that day, what is the main difference between Protestants and Catholics? I guess the main difference between a Protestant and a Catholic is that uh, we believe that salvation comes through Christ and they believe that it comes through the church. Uh, in other words, um, uh, that uh, we believe that Christ is the mediator, the restorer, the reconciler between us and God, and you, you receive what he did for us by dying on the cross by faith and and a supernatural uh, thing takes place it's called regeneration or the new birth it's not just a cultural change of your mind but there's a dynamic uh, a spiritual uh, transaction where you move from death unto life or, or eternal life uh, or it's the Greek word is zoe life which is life as God has it but as I understand it the Catholic Church believes that salvation comes through the church um, so I, uh, I can't explain that all together, but it would be like uh, if the church is the bride of Christ, then um, uh, it seems like that the bridegroom would probably be the more obvious as, as opposed to the, the bride being, being the one that uh, birthed the church. But here's, uh, we're in southwest Chicago suburb of Palos Heights, but here's, I've never heard anybody say this about Catholicism and so forth, and I love everybody, don't have a problem, if they're, pre if whoever it is, if they're preaching Christ, uh, I, I can hang with you good enough, but uh, th there were two races of people, and I shouldn't get into this, guys, this is, this is doctrinally and theologically a little heavy, uh, I should know better than doing this, but um, anyway, there there are two uh, races of people according to the Bible, and I don't mean the ethnic races. I'm talking about the family of God. One was uh, uh, what the first race is called. I believe the same. Okay. Well, now individual Catholics do. There are individual Catholics that 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 literally believe that. Uh, and so that's cool. You know, there's there's a lady in our church that uh, had a wonderful testimony to share Sunday. Um, her fiancé was uh, diagnosed with cancer. We started praying and so forth, and God healed him. We went to the doctor last Thursday a week, and the doctor uh, said it's gone. And so we had her to come up front and tell everybody that, you know, what had happened. And she said, now I'm Catholic. Uh, and... Uh, you know, but she said, "I'm I'm born again, so we need to know the word of God, so when confusion comes on false or false prophecy, yeah, yeah, you do have to have to know." But here's the point about um, some Catholics do treat church like a country club, at least in my town. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, yeah, I agree agree with you. It's uh, I think I think there's a mindset of the church in America that is a country club mindset. We go to church on Sunday. And we we congregate with people who look like us, talk like us, act like us, and then from Monday through Saturday, uh, too often we don't live out uh, the reality of, of Christianity, which is loving mankind. Uh, yeah, we do. I think we do live a, a dub, double life. Um, and so, see, the the church is is we're not policemen. We're not spiritual policemen. God didn't give Christians. A spiritual badge to go and arrest people for for doing it wrong, um, or for for or uh, that kind of a thing. We, we're actually well, yeah, yeah, and and a lot of people do that. Not ju not just Catholics. Uh, that that's a fact. And uh, if somebody's really serious about Christ, there's more 
than than going to the country club on Sunday. And listen, guys, when when you get to the country club, since you're catered to, you want everything to be just nice. You know, you're paying your dues so that the preacher doesn't go too loud, doesn't get to go too long, the music's not too loud, the seats are comfortable and all of that. And then we walk out and we never think about helping somebody, about reaching out to anybody, about sharing our faith with people. The, The mantra of today for a lot of Christians is, my plate is full. And it's so full that we're failing to be Christ to the world. And a lot of uh, Christians that I know, yes, but God knows, when judgment will come, he will deal with people that live a double life. Yeah, yeah, he, he will, and I think he's dealing with us now. Thank you for your prayer. For oh, oh, wow. She's woken from her coma. That is awesome. We were talking about her today. Uh, I mentioned her a couple of times today. We prayed for her Sunday. And, um, yeah, and I sent out an email. Man, that is awesome because you're in London, I think. So, wow. She has a long journey. Okay. Wow. Well, that just, man, that just hits my heart deep. I grew up in the hospital, so uh, so to speak. So I, uh, when a child's suffering, that really gets to me. But, uh, see, I think that the church is a healing army, and I tell my church all the time, that we're not policemen, we're battlefield medics. And the way I understand battlefield medics is that during world war time, such as in World War II, the, uh, the battlefield medic or would, uh, of course, come to the aid of any fallen uh, comrade. Uh, but if I understand it correctly, they would also aid the enemy. So heart, lungs, liver, and kidneys all affected fifth of oh. Oh my! Well, Pato, we we I promise you, I'll increase uh, our quotient of prayer for for Lydia and believe that God will completely restore her because he he's not Jehovah God who was. You know that premarital sex is mortal sin. Oh no, no, no! I don't believe it's a mortal sin. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's. Oh, I didn't. Th- I wasn't saying that you did, but no, I, I know that there are people that do without without a doubt. Um, that's awesome. I think I'm getting your handle right, Mistel, Misty. Uh, yeah, and 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 that's wonderful. I'm proud of you. But you no, know, the idea is, you know, th- what what I see is that. Uh, a lot of times the church is like that country club, like I was saying, and, and we're supposed to be the battlefield medics where on some, uh, oh, okay. Well, we serve, uh, Misty, we serve uh, the homeless in uh, Chicago um, on Monday nights at uh, 71st and Jeffrey in South Shore, and then we uh, uh, serve meals to the, uh, no, I, I don't. No, Joseph, I, I, I definitely don't. No, um, even God says come. Uh, and, and let me say this to to Mistel. Uh, yeah, we serve at Seventy uh, First and Jeffrey in South Shore, uh, and we uh, take care of the homeless that live under the viaducts in Pilsen at uh, um, Cermak and Loomis, and then we help um, in Inglewood, uh, Clara's house. So. Um, Oh, thank you for saying so. Uh, yeah, so that's not uh, I- I- immediate damnation because, uh, oh, awesome. Okay. Well, we're right there at 71st and Jeffrey. We literally set up the tables on the sidewalk, and they get a complete meal. We don't just give sandwiches. Uh, we give them a complete meal. This last Monday they had uh, meatloaf and all the all the fixings and so forth. Uh, you can check it out on our website at uh, Mercy Gate. I-N-T-L dot com. That's Mercygate, I-N-T-L dot com. And we're in Palos Heights. That's about 121st in Harlem, in, in, the, in that area. Um, but yeah, getting back to his question about uh, it, the sin being mortal and, and damnation, even God says, uh, come, let us reason, to, reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow, though red as wool. Um, uh, they, they can be as crimson. So... Uh, God isn't looking for ways to keep people out of heaven. I promise you that. And here's the key with uh, with, with dealing with, with sin in your life. That is, 
you know, you just don't hide it from God. He knows it already. So I tell our church, uh, keep every room of, uh, of your heart, every door of your heart open completely. And, and, and say, God, you know, I give you the privilege. Show me where, where I'm falling short or, or messing up. And when he points it out to you, you, you acknowledge that and repent. And then you stop. And uh, if you'll do that, uh, then um, there's a verse in, in uh, the Bible, it's in uh, the epistle of uh, John, First John, and uh, God, uh, he says, God says, if you will confess your sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What that means is that uh, God's saying, if you'll just acknowledge that you're capable of failing me in sinning, yeah, he does. Yeah, he corrects us and keeps us close. And uh, if you'll acknowledge to Christ that, um, hey, I'm able, I'm capable of failing you, but I don't want to, when it says, and then he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness, it means God does housekeeping in your heart and soul because there will be things you don't even know about. And he said, I'll take care of, uh, and confess our sins. Yeah, 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 be careful who you confess them to, though. But, um, yeah, it don't ever confess your sins to somebody that's interested in it. Okay, that's a little bit of a joke, but really don't. So, um, yeah, you know, he he he. Uh, wonder if you can... Yeah, you got to. Sex is is reserved for uh, for marriage, according to Bible. Uh, yes, because they use it against you. Yeah, they do really. No, the the, the pattern of God. Uh, and the model and the pattern that, that God established is for sex in the confines of marriage. So, uh, uh, yeah, there's a price to pay. See, there's a spiritual uh, thing that takes place in... Uh, we shouldn't get into this on Periscope, guys, because this will get heavy. Uh, but the Bible... Guys, Yeah, I think, I'm not sure if I got you there. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, yeah, fornication doesn't, you know, it's reserved for, for marriage and it's blessed. But when when uh, when you have sex outside of marriage or period, there is a, a spiritual dynamic that takes place because sex is so powerful. Sex is so powerful in the design of God that it creates, it can create life. It can create a living soul. That's how powerful it is. It's not just emotionally uh, good and fulfilling and, and, and so forth. That's right, uh, Miss Mistel. Uh, uh, but, I mean, it's a powerful thing. There's a spiritual dynamic because uh, in um, when a couple is married, the Bible says the two become one flesh. We understand that that's physical. Uh, you know the act of consummating the marriage, but there's a spiritual union that takes place, and uh, the Bible talks about uh, in I think the book of Proverbs it says that he that is joined to a, a harlot that they are one. So there's a a uh, your your soul uh, gets enti- entwined and attached to whoever that is that you're uh, having sex with, and. Um, so uh, that that's a uh, and there's a bondage there's a, a connection there and so before I marry people we cover that kind of a thing and we denounce any of the relationships that took place outside of marriage uh, so that there's nothing uh, of um, to, that that that's contaminated that'll be brought into the the new marriage uh, like the bond and devil when people think is love. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and it is a, a bond. Uh, th- there's no doubt about that. So, um, yeah. So I just, I, I uh, uh, God's correcting some things that that have been wrong in the church. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and that's part of what my blog is about. Just to, and then I take time at times to to apologize here. Oh, Joseph, I appreciate that. You're, uh, I, mean, I appreciate that a whole, whole, whole lot. Yeah. Um, uh, well, thank, thank you for that. I, you know what? I think that that today people just want 
truth, and I think that people want you to be honest with them. Um, we've wound up, and guys, if you all don't mind to, to like or to share while you're on here, if you've got an Android, you, you can uh, switch left or right and, um, and, and share it and ask friends to follow. If you're um, uh, an iPhone, you can swipe up or down and do the very same thing. Well, I'd appreciate that if you, if you would. But I think that uh, uh, we've, we've been so sissy in, in preaching to people so as not to offend them that we we really met, weakened our message and uh, did a disservice to people. So I think that people today uh, really want uh, transparency and authenticity and honesty. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I really do. I appreciate that that a whole lot. And uh, they that and if you love somebody enough, especially. If you're their pastor, uh, you have to love people enough to to tell them the truth from your perspective. Uh, you know, no matter how hard it is at times, because you're dealing with a person's soul and and eternity. So um, I, I think we've veered away from some of that too. But you know, there again, uh, what I was getting at a little while ago is how that Christ. If there's anybody that elevated people, it was Christ. And there's one person. Oh, just boy, I appreciate that, man. I do, I do. Thanks for the hearts too, guys. I appreciate that. There is a verse uh, in the Bible that says um, that Christ was accused. I love those hearts. Thanks, guys. That uh, Christ was accused of being friends to excessively wicked sinners. Can you imagine that? Now, if uh, you know a lot of Christians, I don't see doing that. Uh, being a friend to to excessively wicked sinners, whatever that means, and uh, I, what I do hear sometimes, or a lot of times, is that Christians are cursing the darkness out there. They don't like the way that things are going in the nation, and and we do a lot of cursing. Well, Jesus said, "We're the salt of the earth, the light of the world." I told a, a group the other day, if you don't like the darkness, then uh, it, it, then go change it by being the light to to the world. So if Jesus was accused of being the friend of excessively wicked sinners, that probably looked like compromise. Um, my Twitter is church right now. Church right now altogether. Uh, yeah, church right now. and um, Or on Facebook too at Freddie Steele or, or Mercy Gate. And... Um, but Jesus, uh, there's a, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is where Jesus went to the well and met a woman of ill repute at the well. And uh, her name, uh, I mean, she was a, a Samaritan. Yeah, church right now, that's it exactly. And she, the Jews believed that Samaritans, who were half-breeds, half-Jewish, and, and uh, they were just half-Jews, uh, they uh, theologically and doctrinally, they believed that Samaritans were less than dogs and they were unclean and so forth and this is a powerful point and so Jesus tells the disciples he said uh, you, you guys go to town and get some lunch and here's where I'll be which he went to Jacob's well which was in the town of Sychar okay bless you buddy I wish you would I'd appreciate that that'd be great and uh, bless you um yeah, what well, was for lunch? Well, it must have been a lot to get take all 12 of them to go to town to get it. But what was happening, Jesus knew that the disciples were going to uh, foul up what he was getting ready to do because he is breaking religious law by going to uh, uh, speak to this Samaritan woman by speaking to a woman and uh, being in Samaria and at the, uh, where he was. He was breaking all kinds of... Uh, this would have condemned him uh, according to Jewish law and tradition. So he sends them away and he meets this woman at the well. Something in that setting you should have never done. And so they start to talk and uh, he um, uh, asks her to draw water and, and uh, she said, you know, there's nothing to draw. You have nothing to draw with. And he finally said well if you knew who I was um, 
you know, you would ask me for a living water and I'd give you my living water, you'd never thirst again and you would be fulfilled and happy and so forth. And uh, so then he says, well, well, go, go get your husband, uh, go get your husband. They, uh, or I think she mentioned, I can't remember. But anyway, he said, you're right. You don't have a husband. She said, he said, you've had five and the man you're living with now isn't your husband. What's interesting is that then she, uh, the verses go on to say that she went back to town to Sychar and said, come meet a man. She said this happily and excitedly. Come meet a man that told me everything I ever did. Well, if he was condemning her uh, and passing judgment upon her, she wouldn't have been happy about it. She was actually relieved and released from the judgment and the condemnation by Christ. And Jesus broke all kinds of religious tradition in in reaching uh, to people. So Christ elevates people. Uh, you know, uh, when you become his child, Paul says in Ephesians that you and I have been raised up together in, uh, by, by Christ and by what he did for us. So uh, he's, he's, if there's ever been anybody that, that knows equality, and here's, here's another aspect of it too, uh, and this is, I think the church can be like the Jews were in Jesus' day because they were God's special people. And Jesus was sent to minister to them, but yet uh, the, the good news of his love wasn't just saved for Jews. It had to go to the Gentiles as well. Can you imagine how humiliating it was, so to speak, for because in religion you can get kind of clannish and cliquish and think it's just us and that we're the right ones and or we're the most right and we kind of grade other people and other faiths, other religions and so forth. I'm talking about Christian uh, Christian religions. Uh, within ourselves we do. And, um, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought there, guys. Don't go on up my train, jump, jump the track. Oh, yeah. So uh, what happens is that then... Uh, the gospel through uh, through Paul, the Apostle Paul, is taken to Gentiles. And so salvation came to the Jews. They rejected it. And here they get the Gentiles. I hope this isn't too heavy, guys. But the Gentiles get the blessings that God had promised to, to Ab- their, the Jews' father, Abraham. So can you imagine how humiliating that, that would have been to them? But that's the way that God is. Uh, uh, the gospel of John says that God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so uh, one translation says God did not send his son into the world to to pass judgment upon the world and tell them how bad that they are Uh, he comes to tell you uh, how uh, what a great plan that he has for you that with one simple acknowledgement of who he is you can pass from eternal death into eternal life. And uh, I think that the church at times, uh, that I, the way that I see it and understand it, we've done a poor job in expressing that to people. I think we've seemingly laid them down with, uh, well, number one, I don't think we portrayed Christ like. I don't th- think uh, Christ the way that we should. I don't think we've been as loving, forgiving, hospitable, um, uh, gracious, kind, serving as what, what we should. And I think that there's a big portion of the church that has fought uh, people that that are unsaved or don't know Christ. And it's been a, uh, uh, that's just not the way that that Christ did it, and that's not the way that we're supposed to do it. So if you've been hurt and offended and wounded by Christians or the the church, I understand that. I hate that. I apologize. But uh, I I would just ask you, if you get a chance, go to uh, BibleGateway.com. And uh, and type in their their search line, um, John, space one, and just start reading. Uh, up and because if you read the Gospel of John, you're going to really find out a lot about the heart of Jesus. And because Jesus said, "If you've seen me, you've seen the Father." So Jesus was an exact representation of the Father. And so the Bible says that he went about doing good and healing all who are sick and oppressed of the devil. So wherever he went, uh, his actions were uh, exemplifying the heart of God, the, the true heart of God. And um, I think that a lot of times we Christians uh, impose an Old Testament God, the one that was uh, uh, 
a God of judgment and so forth upon people today and uh, and partly because we don't understand grace and grace means it's the unmerited uh, it's it's the kind of a thing that it's too good to be true but it is still true and uh, or you'd say well what's the catch but there is no catch with the, the grace of God um, that's just how uh, that was the purpose of, of Christ he came to seek and to save that which was lost and we get the benefit of it and all we have to do first uh, yeah we do uh, is receive it by faith and then you live it and you progress and grow in your walk with this it is grace and um, and, and we have to we have to minister that grace to other people as well um, you know do unto others as you would have them do unto you do unto others as you would have them do unto you and then Jesus said that loving God and others as ourselves is the first and highest and greatest commandment and so I tell folks uh, that listen you can't make me mad you can't offend me uh, uh, you know you, you pretty much can't because I see myself as having a job of, of helping people to get to know Christ and if I spend time alienating myself from people, then how am I going to be that catalyst to help connect, help show, show them the way to Christ and how much that He loves them? So um, you're 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 an agent of healing. If you're a, a child of God, if you're His a child, a Christian, you're an agent of healing. Uh, the Bible says the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. So. A death-defying spirit or anti-death and anti-disease lives inside of you. And Jesus said to his disciples, now that you've received, he said, freely you've received, now freely give. If the church would get mobilized to be a healing army and would smile at people, have a kind word, um, you know, don't respond in kind. Um, I can't tell you the times that I walk up to a, a checkout counter and there's somebody in front of me is having words with the uh, the person at the cash register and then I'll come up and the person's mad and, and I'll diffuse it I'll be kind I'll be nice I'll be courteous and 99.9 .9 times out of a hundred they respond in kind and they'll kind of melt down and the venom goes uh, where in times past I would have probably if they were ugly to me I'd have been ugly to them but being a, a Christian you just you can't do that you, we are salt and we are light and you project uh, you know and, and so uh, if you don't love people if you don't love life that's going to come across and then if people realize I heard somebody say uh, that uh, might have been D.L. Moody that you and I uh, yes we are yes uh, I think D.L. Moody said that we're the only Bible that some people will ever read and uh, yeah it sure is the main thing is love and uh, that's where it starts that, that's for sure and uh, for God so loved the world and that's the that's the thing that he's put inside of us that very same kind of selfless love sacrificial love and folks for love to be love it has to be a verb you can't love somebody if it's not put into action we have faith in that. yeah that's what 1 Corinthians 13 says fully and completely we can uh, speak with tongues of men and angels but if we don't have charity or love we're nothing we're a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal well folks I'm going to let you go but uh, I wanted to uh, hit you up tonight and uh, just bring this across about how how that God and Christ handles equality and there's no big eyes or little U's uh, in the mind and the heart of God Matter of fact, he said, if you want to be the greatest, you have to become like a little child. And so God's not impressed with impressive people. Um, uh, oh, thank you. Well, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. So, uh, you know, you're a, you're a battlefield medic. Your smile can be healing. Your your handshake can be healing. Um, your, your, your courtesy can be healing to somebody today. Employ that. I'll employ it with you. And... Um, We'll just make the world a better place. Thanks so much. Don't want me to leave you. Well, 
Periscope doesn't want me to leave you. Well, that's funny. <laughs> it's funny. It won't let me leave you.